Good evening and salutations, my Days of Elijah fans. Wow, it's been a minute since I said that. Um, <laughs> but going into this episode, I want to start off with Gwen. I'm you know, at this point, I'm so over her whining and her pining and just the, just the constant desperation that this woman just exhibits. Because the thing is, it's not as though Xander didn't sit there and be honest with her as far as, you know, how long it's going to take. And, you know, he doesn't want to sit there and string her along. And, you know, Sarah, I mean, he even said recently that, listen, once I get my divorce, then I might be able to start thinking about what my future looks like. But he's been with Sarah for a hot minute. You know, you got to sit there and give him some time. And it's not like he wants to sit there and hurt her or string her along or anything like that. But you know, these things, when it comes to a matter of a heart, it, it takes it takes some it takes as long as it takes. So her constantly seems to be trying to rush him and you know, getting mad at him and stuff like that. It's just like, bro, come on. Like it just gets kind of annoying to watch after a while. And there's one point where after they find out that their numbers has actually increased since they took it over. She starts kissing on him. I'm like, what are you doing? She's all like, oh, I got caught up in the moment. I was like, no, bro. You're just, you're just exhibiting desperation right there, which is, honestly, to tell you the truth, not an attractive look. No matter how hot you look. It's just, it's not an attractive look. So he zips out of there like there was no tomorrow. Of course, and of course, when Leo gets back, you know, she's like whining and complaining about her situation with Xander and where she stands and blah, 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 blah. And of course, you know, Leo didn't help by, I forgot the nickname that he called both of those two. Um, yeah, I forgot the nickname that he called both of those two, but of course, she was not happy about that. And he left. Then he came back and he's like, you know, listen, I want to sit there and have a talk with you. But I'm like, I feel like she's going to get her hopes up again, which is like, oh, you're not some 16-year-old love pup. You know what I'm saying? You're not some 16-year-old um, girl that's like, you know, some sort of like love puppy, puppy or something like that. Like, you're a grown woman. I'm like, just seriously, just have a little bit more self-respect, you know? Now, speaking of Xander, Xander did go to talk to Maggie, get in an interview and everything like that, talk a little bit about Sarah and, you know, um, Gwen and everything like that. You know, the thing is, he's still pining over Sarah, which I, I, I'm i going to be honest, I don't know what he sees in that woman. I really don't. I don't get it. He's sitting there looking at his phone the whole time when he's in the office. While you know, while um, Gwen is not there talking to him, I'm just like, I don't, I don't get it. I, I, I would never get it. I would never get the fans. And don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking you. If you like Xander and Sarah together, I just don't get it. And again, I said this in my other review. I think my GH review said, I guess for me, I just, I, I think more logically than an emotional standpoint. You know, everyone is all like, oh, you know, Sarah's love has changed Xander. You know, he's now a good person. He he did it for her, and that's so romantic. And I'm just like, no part of that sentence is actually romantic at all, okay? Because if you don't change for yourself, it doesn't matter, okay? you are If you don't change for yourself, you change for the wrong reasons. And nine times out of ten, whatever those changes are, they're not going to stick. They're just not. So, um, yeah, I don't get it. I'm not feeling it. But, you know, to each his own. So Leo is making the rounds and he comes up to chat and he's all like, hey, you know, give me the gossip on, you know, what's going on with Titan as far as, you know, Alex not being, C you know, CEO. <laughs> And at first, he doesn't really say anything. He gives the usual basic answer. And then he says it's because of Leo. He was like, because of Leo and what you said. And this is something that I didn't understand. So he basically was like, well, it's because of you and what you said to Victor. And this is the reason why he's not 
in charge of, of Titan anymore. And I'm like, okay, well, you got your answer. You literally got your answer of why Alex isn't, you know, why he's not CEO. Now, of course, he does sit there and throw around the term man whore, but he pretty much got his answer. So I don't understand why when Stephanie came by and they were quiet for a hot minute, he starts asking um, Stephanie the same answer. He's like, oh, well, you know, he gave me the, you know, the usual PR spin or whatever. But in reality, I want to I want to know what's going on. I want to know the dirt and this down the third. So he starts grilling and grilling and grilling, which, again, made no sense. Chad, for some odd reason, decided to um, tell Stephanie's business. Oh, yeah, you know, Alex, you know, um, he turned off his phone when he was with Stephanie and she couldn't see her mom during her last dying breath and stuff like that. And I'm like, bro, what is... I'm sitting like there watching the whole time. I was just like, bro, really? I mean, I know that Chad can be kind of a hot dad, but I'm like... Really? After that, Leo, for some odd reason, wanted more dirt. He did, he did express his condolences and stuff like that. Um, saying he's sorry, of, you know, what she's going through, and then he left. And of course, Stephanie was just not happy, and he was all like, oh, well, he kept grilling you, and this, that, and the third, so she said what she said, you know, she pretty much was just kind of harsh with him, as far as, like, learn how to sit there and control your emotions better, you're in a PR game now, and he leaves, she leaves. Now, there's friction in the office with, and I, I'm kind of like jumping all over the place, but there's friction in the office with Alex and Maggie. Specifically, first of all, <laughs> in the beginning, it was kind of funny. I don't usually do the whole daydream things, so but it's kind of funny. You know, Alex is sitting there in the, in the big chair, and, you know, he has a this daydream of Stephanie coming in talking about, hey, listen, I can pretty much do whatever I want. We can have sex on this, on this table right here. And of course, he wakes up when Maggie's like, oh, you're in my chair. They get to talking. Long story short, Maggie wants to drop Bella, saying that the magazine wasn't doing good and we could just write, off, write it as a tax off. I mean, um, write it off as a, or a tax write off or whatever. Give the um, bottles and people, whatever that's working on it, a service package. Um, Alex isn't happy about it. He winds up leaving. That's when Xana comes in. Now, Alex runs into Stephanie, and long story short, Stephanie's like, listen, if you really care about this magazine, fight for it. Turn it around, do, you know what I'm saying? Like, turn around something positive. You know, right now she's only seeing the negative aspects, but turn it around something positive. And when he gets back to the office, he calls, aka Uncle Vic, about the magazine. Now, Bella, I guess, was um, one of Victor's daughters. I don't know what happened with Bella, so if you can let me know in the comment section, be much appreciated. So after Chanel, you know, finished interviewing and seemed like she's about to hire Talia, Talia leaves, um, Paulina comes in. Paulina gives her the bad news that their asses is frozen, um, she won't be able to hire any more people, so she can't hire Talia, which honestly, tell you, if it took a hot mess to then get her name, because they didn't say it. And even when J Jada said it at first, I was like, huh, what? But yeah, Talia. Um, so yeah, Paulina was sitting there just telling her about the whole lawsuit and ass is frozen and everything like that. So that sucks. Um, and, you know, it seemed like Chanel and, and, and Talia kind of headed off, you know, Chanel Smith, they're telling her about the girlfriend situation and the work situation. And of course, Talia was like, listen, this is why you don't date where you work, because things are messy and they end messy and it's just messy all around, <clears throat> all around. Plus, she can bake and stuff like that. So she practically already has a job. So when Talia comes back after she finished filling out the application and everything, and I thought that, um, you know, it looked like Chanel was about to do me like, hey, so the thing is, well, you're hired. It just like that. It was like, oh, okay, cool. I'm wondering where you're going to sit there and find the money to pay this girl. That's going to be interesting. Um,
Now, I have no idea about how Sloan was able to sit there and freeze her assets and everything like that. Um, but, you know, when it comes to assaults, let's, let's, let's just sit there and take legal and legal, like matters of legal and matters of medical with a grain of salt because, well, you know. <sighs> Always go back to HIPAA. I will always go back to HIPAA because it's one of those things, you know, in, in general, it's one of those things where it's like, even for a fictional show, you know, and this is for the general house movie view, even for a fictional show, Diane was like, you can't do that. Telling a judge, she doesn't have to sit there and tell you this because it's protected under HIPAA. And it's like, the plot was so was so much was so important that it overrided well pretty much whatever the, whatever the um whatever HIPAA actually really meant even in that universe. So that's what I always sit there and say take take it with a grain of salt. Um, let me see something. So because I knew I was missing something. So before Jada came into the station, um. You know, I mean, before Talia came to the station, Jada, you know, wanted to sit there and ask Rafe if they should go to lunch and stuff like that. And Rafe was like, it's not a good idea because, you know, you know, um, for Mayor Carver or whatever, we can't sit there and fraternize in the office and stuff. And here's the thing. If he just would have left it at that, it would have been fine. But then they started going into this whole Valentine's Day and how they spent, you know, how they shared a meal during Valentine's Day. And, um... Long story short, it's like Rafe started to reveal his feelings towards her and then backed up and then started to like kind of dig his own hole, you know, like, and Jada was like, so you're interested in me? And he pretty much was like, well, uh, you know, so the thing is, and, uh, uh, oh, oh yeah, you know, that, that's when Talia came in. And of course, when Talia left, Jada was like, so well, I'm back to the matter at hand. Um, so like, are you interested in me? Like, like, what's, what's going on? And of course, once again, he got saved by the bell. Um, literally, his phone rang. So he headed on out. Now, I was talking to my, one of my subscribers. And this is, and granted, this was more about General Hospital, but it does lead into the same thing. So in General Hospital, there's this guy. I don't even remember what his name is. And they're like, whoever this guy is, they want him paired up with Jordan. Because to be honest, I don't really think that there's anyone that could really be paired up with Jordan except for Curtis. But somebody was like, I don't think it's a good idea because of, of a power dynamic. You know, he works for her. It's just kind of odd and just very off. Now, granted, throughout these shows, throughout these soaps and shows or whatever, there's always been a bit of a power dynamic. This isn't the first time that you had office romance where somebody was in a higher position than, um, you know, than the person that they're dating. I mean, you even sit there and look at, what was it called? S, S, um, GSPR, whatever the hell her firm name is. And technically, technically Stephanie is Chad's boss. But yeah, they're dating. You know? So I don't, you know, I don't know how some people feel about Jada dating Rafe and being like a power dynamic and stuff like that. But I'm like, this isn't the first time in history that that's happened. So I don't really understand what, what the huge issue is. I mean, I can I can see it to some extent, but at the same time, I'm just like, well, the thing is, you know, it's not like it hasn't been done before. I don't know what they're going to actually do with that. Jada does look pretty, pretty damn good. <laughs> I can't even sit there and say the word darn at that point, because one, that just sounds stupid, and two... That just does not describe Jada Hunter at all. That girl has got it going on. Anyway, um, Talia is basically snicked this saying that she's going to be staying in Salem. And Jada is not really too happy about that, to be honest. Her apartment is already small as it is. And it's one thing if it's just a visit. 
and then you're in and you're out. But it's another thing where she's actually staying. There's just something about her. And there's a reason why she doesn't want her staying. And it's not just a cramped apartment. You know. I have a feeling that maybe Talia might be a little bit of a, um, you know, I don't know. I don't want to just say wild child, but like she, I feel like she's definitely going to be a lot like Chanel. You know, um, adventurous, I will sit there and say. Because she wasn't there talking about like partying all night and stuff like that. Um, yeah, that's going to be kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I do have a feeling like at some point they are going to probably hook up. Jada, I mean, not Jada, um, Talia and Chanel, which is going to be kind of odd, because, like, I'm going to be sitting there going back to that conversation, uh, hey, remember when you said it's not a good idea to date people that you work with? I feel like that's about it. I can't really think of too much of anything else that wound up happening in the episode. Um, yeah, all in all, another good episode. I mean, to be honest, they've all been good episodes so far, which is kind of, I mean, it's kind of a shame because I haven't been able to do a review on days in a hot minute, like with my schedule at work and um, getting home so late and starting time to do reviews and stuff like that and making sure I get time enough where it's like, it's just been crazy as far as my schedule is concerned. Um, so that's another reason why I haven't been doing a lot of um Days of our lives reviews. There's other reasons too, but that's that's that is one of them. But um, yeah, I can't think of anything else that happened. But if I did miss anything, come to the, um come to the live stream. I watch all four of the soap operas Monday through Friday, so I'm always gonna be talking about um always gonna be sitting there talking about them, like days as well as everything else. So if I'm not doing a review on days. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm going to be watching this, so definitely come through if you want to sit there and hear my thoughts about days as well as all the other soap operas. Um, anyway, with that being said, I'm going to go. I want to thank you for watching. Be safe, and I'll see you in the next video.